for a lot of men, what he represented was, okay, I'm not, I'm not always the problem as a man. I'm, I'm not the only type. It's not just toxic masculinity. There's also toxic femininity. And also, these motherfuckers don't know what they want. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Because I just want to build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I want to keep it real with you. I want to live better, eat better. I want to love better, sleep better. But yeah, like, I people wanna... are just hurt. Absolutely. And when you become hurt, you just start to close off a little bit more. You start to wall yourself in a little bit more. You might not show certain sides of yourself anymore. And so the, the men are doing that. The women are doing that. And neither side is willing to concede on their position. I agree. Like you have a lot. You talk about men that have been vulnerable and gotten screwed over. What about the women? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think the reason I talk so much about the men, though, is because we don't hear that at all. Yeah. We don't see that represented in movies. We don't, we don't see that in t television, radio, right? So at least... And then one of the things that I really admire about women is that women have the ability to form community in a way that men don't. What do you mean? Like... Women are kind of socialized to be emotionally vulnerable and authentic with one another, right? Like, you know, girl time, shit like that. Whereas dudes, we're socialized to be warriors. So we get praise for, you know, how strong we are in reference to other men. So how much we can endure and, you know what I'm saying, keep on moving. Unfortunately, I think black women especially because of a lot of our traumas are turning into men in that way, being rewarded for how much you can bear mm -hmm. and how strong you are as a woman, which I'm completely against. But I think women in their natural state, um, they provide each other a catharsis that men don't. Like niggas ain't sitting there, right, bro. Tell me what she did this time. <laughs> I was going to ask if y'all do that. No, y'all get least. together and have brunch and talk about these girls out here that's... we should <laughs> we should y'all should we should but and, and i think you know despite some of my qualms with like the online community and shit like that i think for a lot of men that's what it is that is their opportunity to let their head down <laughs> and you know what i'm saying and and uh be bonded with other men who are similarly just trying to figure life out mm -hmm. and a big part of us figuring life out is figuring y'all out so we gonna bond. You gonna, you gonna see a Muslim brother, uh, uh, tall brother, short brother, light skin, dark skin. The one thing that they're gonna have in common is man, these hoes. <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> man, I, right. my wife is my girlfriend. That. Yeah, you know. So it's a beautiful thing, but like, I think that's where we can take notes from y'all for sure. Mm-hmm. You should. Mm -hmm. We're trying, and that's why I'm trying to bring balance to this conversation. Instead of just talking about women or talking at women, I want to talk to women. Do you feel like that's why so many of you received Kevin Samuel so well? Like he gave y'all a platform to congregate and talk about these women or put women down, actually, in some cases. I think Kevin Samuels was black men's anger translator. A black man's anger translator. Anger translator. Okay. I think, um, for better or worse, he was the first time we saw a black man in the mainstream saying, you know what? Some of these hoes ain't shit too. Because we see a lot, <laughs> we see a lot of that on the female side. And, and we've kind of gotten used to just taking it. Mm -hmm. And I think, for a lot of men, what he represented was, okay, I'm not, I'm not always the problem as a man. I'm, I'm not the only type. It's not just toxic masculinity. There's also toxic femininity. And also, these motherfuckers don't know what they want. Mm -hmm. I want a man who is making $800,000 a year, but I want, I want him be, to be home to take the kids to school. Mm -hmm. 
He's running a multi-million dollar company, but I want him at every single recital and I want him to, to be rubbing my back and to help me cook and this, this and that. It's like in real life, you have to pick a struggle. Yeah. Right. And, and then the worst part is, and I think this is why he became famous, the average of best thing. If I want to make it to the league, I got to figure out, okay, the average NFL player of my, in my position, how fast does he run? How tall is he? How much does he weigh? How much does he bench? What's his shuttle time? What's his vert? I have to figure those things out and compare myself accordingly and figure out where I need to improve. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the message women receive from media is that you deserve anything and everything. You shouldn't have to compare. So it don't matter that you are, according to Kevin Samuels, a four. You deserve a 1% man. And he should, he should see the value. Forget Iman and all these supermodels. Forget them. I am the best woman that you can ever hope for. Even though when it comes to what men value, you might not rank that high. Mm -hmm. So I think he was famous or he blew up so much because he was telling women, hey. Be realistic. <laughs> I agree. Be realistic. And it's not even, this is, this is what I've added to it, right? I'm not saying that you can't get that dude. I'm just saying, instead of thinking that you're Michael Vick, maybe try to be Tom Brady. What do I mean by that? <laughs> Michael Vick came out running fast. He's one of those naturally gifted people. Tom Brady was drafted in the sixth round. And he's now considered the GOAT, the greatest player that's ever played quarterback in the NFL. Was he the fastest? No. Was he the strongest? No. Did he have the best arm? No. Was he the most accurate? No. But that, that motherfucker put together what he had and he was able to still compete with those guys. Now, the only way you can beat Tom Brady is self-awareness. To realize that, no, I'm not the most beautiful. I don't have the biggest titties. My ass is not the plumpest. But you know what? When a man is around me, he's going to feel the best he's ever felt in his life because I have personality. Mm -hmm. Because I know how to communicate well. Because I'm accountable. Because this. So I think the, the, the greater message Kevin Samuels was trying to get across was, first be not just realistic, but self-aware. And after you're self-aware, you know where you need to improve on. And if you can improve on those things, you can definitely knock these IG models out the water because all they have is that. All they have is the speed and the strength. The sexual market value. <laughs> I know a little bit. I watched a few clips. And that's it. But unfortunately, you know, also because of media, that's not what goes viral. That's why my shit ain't viral. Because I sit down and talk for two hours with a woman and try to break shit down and she try to break shit down for me. Mm -hmm. But people want the, oh, Bitch, you ugly. Yeah. That's why you ain't got nobody. Yeah. Well, nigga, your dick small. And that's why you ain't got <laughs> You know what I mean? And that's where we are as a society. Yeah. It's all, yeah. It's all transactional, too.